How we doing? This is Fox back again for sound design tutorials. That's the bass sound you're going to be hearing today. I'm going to be showing you how to make it. It's made, obviously, as you can see, inside NI Massive. The request came from a guy who I was speaking to him on Facebook, and he said to me that Camo and Crooked are really blowing up and doing the rounds at the minute drum and bass style. I mean, I've heard of them years ago, but obviously it seems that they're making more of an impact now nowadays. Um, so yeah, he said for me it'd be cool to make these sort of camo and crooked style plucky bass sounds. Um, after saying that, the link he sent me was for this track, Chase and Moxie for a day, B-Motion vs Dossa and Locust Remix. Very similar to the new camo, camo and crooked kind of stuff, that's probably why he sent it to me. Uh, there is a link in the description to this sound if you want to compare it to uh, this track also this patch is free to download in the description so yeah it's a camo, camo and crooked style bass but it is actually took from this track which is b-motion dossa and locust so yes yeah let's get to it um it's it's basically this massive patch i'll quickly talk about the two layers so i've got the bass the bass group soloed here <laughs> So it's two layers, the main massive patch, and then I've got this other slightly brighter, brighter patch which I made inside Serum. It isn't really worth showing this one. It is just um, a subby saw wave with a plucky envelope on it, no effects. That's what it sounds like. It's an octave higher than the um, massive patch that I've got going on just to create some higher harmonics. Fill out the sound a bit more. It was a bass patch, but it did have a lot more to it when I listen to the original. So that's that. This is the massive patch on its own. Soloed. Very square wavy. I could tell by listening to it that it was all about the square waves. Um, I thought this modulation oscillator was having a lot to do with the uh, overall character of the sound, but it doesn't really have much effect at all. Maybe it makes it a little bit duller. Um, it's a modulation oscillator, 12 octaves down. Anywho, I'm digressing. We're going to initialize this. Hey, up. We're going to initialize this, he says, and uh, I'll show you how I made it. So to start with, we're going to create a plucky envelope on envelope 4. Point zero attack or a tiny bit of attack. Um, no sustain. Decay time somewhere there. We're then going to go into the voices section, give it four voices unison. This is just going to appear to make it louder. We're going to make it monophonic. Turn the glide time off. We're going to hit trigger zero reset so the envelope re triggers every time a new MIDI note is pressed. And obviously, we're going to turn this into a real square wavy sort of bass. So we're going to pitch this first oscillator down 12 semitones, negative 12. We'll pull it all the way to the left so it's a pure square. We're going to change the intensity to BEM plus and we're going to pull it all the way to the left. This is going to make it a lot, lot duller, believe it or not. We're going to route it only to filter one, and we're going to push these in serial, even though we're only using one filter, I always push it. It's just common practice for me, even if I'm using one filter, to push it all the way to the top to make sure both filters are going directly into filter one. So we're then going to layer that with another square wave, so pull it all the way to the left, 
12 octaves down again. This time we're going to leave the um, warp mode on spectrum. Push it all the way to the top to filter one. I'm going to introduce this modulation oscillator before I introduce the filter. It's a real basic patch stitch. There is honestly not that much to it. So down 12 semitones or an octave on the mod os. We're going to change this to ring modulation via oscillator one, which is amplitude modulation. We're going to pull it down to around about there. And we're going to close this off over time with envelope two. So pull it down. Envelope 2, this is the one that's given us all the character of the sound. It's doing the modulation of this, the mod oscillator. It's going to modulate a bit of uh, effects later on and also the filter cutoff. So it's very important that we get this set up exactly how we want it. So we definitely don't want any attack this time. No level on the sustain and decay. It's virtually the same. It's virtually the same. It's virtually the same. It's virtually the same. <laughs> As the amp envelope as you can see but it's got a much pluckier attack so rather than that tiny bit of attack time it's got an instant attack so filter i went for a real steep low pass four um difference between a low pass two and a low pass four a low pass two is two poles for octave which means it cuts off at two poles or two octaves sort of slope if you like a four pole is like twice as steep so it's a much more drastic cutoff point turn the resonance down you can, i will assign the resonance to a macro because it can really drastically change the sound later on so the starting point for the cutoff we want all the way down we're going to use that envelope two that we've just created and push it around so it's just under the second f See how how much of an effect this has. We'll actually put the cutoff knob on there. Actually, we'll, we'll um, should we side chain it by this macro? No. Yeah, we'll leave it. I was going to put a macro on there so you can change it, but it's just as easy just to do it inside the modulation box. So yeah, see what difference it makes the uh, destination amount. can really change the scope of the sound and the overall timbre of the sound just by giving a bit more modulation a little bit less, less modulation uh, the more higher frequencies that you let through the brighter it's going to sound and the more it's going to uh, show up the resonance that we've got on the filter as well honestly that is pretty much the sound done all I did then was in the effects section I added some dimension expander because the sound was pretty wide um, it was a wide uh, bass sound I suppose I should turn these um, EQ and the saturator off. So we're going to flick this dimension expander in. It's a tiny bit of stereo width being flicked in with the envelope that's controlling the filter and the uh, ring modulation. Yeah, that's it. I didn't do nothing else. Easy peasy. Um, so yeah, the saturator obviously is something I always do on these sort of bass sounds or any drum and bass bass, pretty much any bass I do, I use Ableton saturator. I normally normally change it to soft sign. It's a bit more severe and a bit harsher than the analog clip. A um, couple of dBs of drive, aiming it around about 313 hertz. I've also dialed the dry wet down a bit, so I'll add be it without and with helps round up the low end a lot better just a bit of EQ and adding some colour to that section as well this 313 hertz is pretty much where I've got this at 330, 340 just a couple of dBs of boost there as well just bringing out that part of the sound this one is a bit of side chain compression bring in the serum patch too and with the whole track
There you have it. Lovely Cameron Crooked style plucky bass. Um, really enjoyed doing this. I very rarely get um, drum and bass requests. More and more coming through. Obviously, if you know me, you know that's what I like making. I'm a huge fan. So, yeah, please keep them coming. Yeah, as I said, if you want to compare this to the original sound that's in that track, there is a link in the description. And also, if you want this patch for free, then click on the... D d the link in the description also but that's it for now any requests please send them through to my facebook page if you did enjoy this please give it a thumbs up if you didn't give it a thumbs down please subscribe on the way out if you are not already and uh, i'll see you on the next one cheers <laughs>